Hello everybody, it's Wyvern here with another bit of Total War Warhammer 2 quick match gameplay. This time around I'm playing as the Dark Elves against the Lizardmen, led by Raf on the map Everail Ridge. And um, so, right off the bat, I am running a bit of an unconventional comp here for as far as Dark Elves are concerned, because I'm not running Malekith, and I'm not running any magic. Um, one of the most common comps I've been seeing uh, since the game was released has been uh, Malekith, being the Lord, uh, with some sort of variation in infantry, often a death hag with a culture of blood. Um, and basically, Malekith hovers around and tries to cast spells constantly and whittle his opponent down. So I wanted to try something a, a little different and uh, try to go against the uh, Lizardmen. So, uh, for my lord, I had to bring a normal Dreadlord with a sword and crossbow. This is the cheapest variant of Dreadlord. Um, and I did bring him on the Black Dragon. He did, is coming in with uh, very few upgrades, actually. He just no Noxious Breath for that, which is just default when you get the dragon. And a Volley of Dark Arrows, which gives him a decent sort of AoE sort of uh, a magic missile spell that can hit a unit and do some okay, okay work. Uh, he himself has okay stats, decent armor, fairly high weapon strength, uh, solid weapon, missile damage that you can poke, poke away at enemies, and uh, his melee stats aren't amazing. They're not as good as the uh, melee dreadlords, but still passable. More importantly, he can drop down on my opponent and definitely terror bomb and uh, route them off that way. So to support him, uh, limited by the two hero limit, of course, I did bring two death hags and I did brought him without a culture of blood. Um, the lizard men can, of course, bring a lot of different types of monsters, and I did not want to have these guys be susceptible to uh, kind of just be swarmed over by by large units that I couldn't necessarily stop. Um, they are basically here to stiffen up my front line, provide me with some bonus against infantry. Um, they do, of course, have uh, Chill Blade, which is a, a speed debuff to all the units around them. And they also have Witch Brew, which allows them to go on Rampage for a little bit and uh, cause some pretty significant damage. Uh, their melee attacks do cause poison, which means they will debuff the enemy. And despite the fact that they have fairly low armor, they still do have a little bit of missile resistance and um, are immune to psychology. So I do believe that's thanks to Frenzy, but regardless, they're pretty resistant to psychology and they shouldn't tear out. On the flanks, I do have two units of Witch Elves, and these guys are there, uh, well, actually, for the core of my army, I do have four units of Dread Spears. Dread Spears are uh, dirt cheap infantry there, as far as even, as far as I, really, Elves are concerned, and e almost any faction, really. Um, they only cost 450. Uh, they do, their stats are very comparable to Empire Spears, except they do have Silver Shields and slightly higher mobility at 33 instead of 31. Otherwise, I do believe the stats are practically the same. Um with uh, some okay and they are two most importantly have bonus against large and that is why I'm bringing them against lizards because lizard men do tend to bring a lot of different monsters. Uh, out on the flanks I do have some witch elves and the witch elves uh, are pretty soft infantry. They are very susceptible to range fire but lizard men do tend to bring a decent amount of um, units that these guys can tear through such as skinks uh, in their infantry contingent because skinks do not go on rampage normally. Uh, but one of the cool things about witch elves is that if you get them into the enemy backline the madness of Cain will prevent their skirmish units from escaping you. Um, not just because of the speed debuff, but because those units will start rampaging, they'll start trying to melee the Witch Elves, and of course that is a bad idea. The Witch Elves will win against, in melee against basically any ranged unit in the game. Uh, they do also have a slight physical resistance, which will make them a little tankier than their stats would otherwise suggest. Um, and they do have a bonus against infantry, of course, so they should do well against uh, the infantry line of the uh, Lizardmen. To deal with enemy large units, I did bring three units of Dark Shards with shields. Uh, once again, Lizardmen do have a sort of a capability to bring a decent range contingent, and the Dark Shards with shields with their silver shields will be able to tank through that, and their armor piercing will allow me to bring down enemy large targets very, very quickly. As you can see, the, a lot of this army is centered around counteracting enemy large units, which of course the Lizardmen can bring in pretty large numbers. Cold One Knights are out on the flanks, uh, or Cold One Dread Knights, sorry. These guys do cause fear. Uh, unfortunately, they can potentially, uh, and they are a very solid stats overall with decent melee attack, decent melee defense, 120 armor, uh, armor piercing. Uh, there's 36 model unit, and uh, but unfortunately, they do have that primal instincts just like the lizard men. They could potentially go on rampage once their hit points drop below 50%. However, they do have murderous prowess, uh, which can boost them once they start getting enough kills, and they do cause fear, which can allow them to sort of uh, hopefully rat off enemy units a little bit. Uh, my opponent brought what I think is a fairly, at this point, sta standard uh, lizardmen army. Lizardmen armies that I've been seeing uh, on ladder on quick match have almost all centered around a mix of temple guards and skinks, and that is because neither of these two units can go over rampage, and uh, that is possibly one of the most frustrating things about uh, lizardmen is when your unit rampages, it goes off chasing some unit that you don't want it to be dealing with, and uh, as a result, you your whole battle plan falls apart. Uh, so this is. And uh, while that can be okay against AI, it's really a problem against hum against human players. So my opponent did bring. Where's Lord Lord Mazamundi, of course, on the uh, Stegadon. Um, I forget what his name is. Uh, but he did bring a lot of different spells. Uh, actually, I do believe that his entire spell roster, including Nether Mint Talk, which could definitely be a problem. He does, of course, have Cold-Blooded, which can heal his al heal allied units. And um, 
just a very powerful caster in general, and mounted on the, on the Stegodon, he definitely is pretty survivable with massive amounts of HP, he has some limited missile damage uh, from the Skinks riding along with him, and um, armor piercing and terror, so he can definitely kind of terror out my army, and uh, my spearmen are not actually immune to terror, so that could definitely be a problem. For his front line, my opponent is bringing a bunch of skink Skinks, including, uh, well actually for, I suppose I should go over heroes, he did bring a Skink Chief as uh, down here um, on foot, who with who brought cold blooded, and this guy is a ranged hero, um, and uh, he can kind of snipe away at your units, and uh, definitely cause a bit of hurt over uh, if given enough time to work. Uh, for his for his front line, my opponent did bring a bunch of skink cohorts. Uh, the skink cohorts with javelins are actually just like normal skink cohorts, except they do have a ranged attack uh, with three ammunition, and it causes poison. So this can definitely give him a bit of an edge in the early fight. Um, and the most importantly, of course, skinks, while not having the best of leadership, they do have immune or they are, do not rampage or uh, kind of have that primal instinct sort of thing. Uh, Temple guards, similar case. Uh, my opponent brought two of them, most likely to counter any large, uh, because of course uh, dark elves can bring a decent amount of large. It's not like you're dealing with dwarves or something. And uh, temple guards, of course, with their armor piercing, will also be able to dish out some hurt to the uh, fairly heavily armored uh, infantry dark elves can potentially bring. Um, in the back, he does have two units of star spears. Uh, uh, which uh, will deal with large. These guys can, of course, potentially go on rampage, but it's not as terrible as, say, uh, feral units. And uh, these skin cohorts over here will hopefully hold, help them hold the line for a little bit. A Bastelodon with a revivification crystal is a bit of an interesting choice. I've done this, used this myself before. It is basically a Bastelodon that cannot rampage, which is huge, and uh, basically has 10 charges of invocation of the heck uh, that I can cast on. Uh, any unit, infantry unit. Now, of course, it can't overcast, it only targets a single unit, but the fact that you can res your own infantry is pretty cool. Uh, Croxicors over here, uh, this unit is very, very powerful. They are basically the best of Crypt Horrors and Tree Men uh, combined with decent melee stats and uh, armor piercing, a bonus against infantry, and uh, massive armor. Uh, so, while perhaps not as tanky as Tree Men or uh, uh, not having the poison, for example, for Crypt Horrors, they're pretty, uh, pretty, pretty solid um, and just a very strong unit overall. Finally, a unit of Cold One Speed Riders over here just to counter my large even more effectively. Uh, these guys do have a decent anti large bonus, and surprisingly, Cold One Speed Riders cannot actually go uh, ham. They can't uh, go around Rampage. So, as you can see, both of our armies are pretty short range, so we're simply pushing straight into each other. We're not doing much fancy footwork here, and uh, we're simply charging each other. You can see the first uh, volleys of uh, of uh, shards are going of uh, dark shards are going in, um, and definitely a bit of wasted here because I simply left them on auto fire and uh, definitely kind of paid for it. You can see the death hags are being thrown in; they will cause these units to uh, they will start dealing with the infantry pretty effectively. And you can see the dark shards are tearing these crocs scores very very effectively. Um, crocs scores tower over my infantry; and they should fall apart pretty easily. Uh, my lord is simply st standing up high and sniping away, uh, poking away with his uh, crossbow, slowly but surely. Um, in the meantime, though, these uh, spe dread spears have been pushed through by this bastelodon with the revivification crystal, and uh, that is actually going to cause them to uh, rout from terror, because the bastelodon, of course, does cause terror. So what I do is I try to f focus the bastelodon down with my crossbows, um, even as my um, star spear or my dread cold one dread knights do push into the back of these star spears with shields, uh, but they get netted by Mintok shortly thereafter. Over here, the Witch Elves are trying to kind of tear through these guys. They are making them rampage. And uh, this unit over here is slowly but surely just getting focused down. Uh, you can see a spell is going down over here. I'm not entirely sure what it is. Um, but I have dropped my Lord over there. I have Banishment, and it does do a little bit of damage to the Dark Shards, but then it wanders off. I'm definitely not a big fan of Vortex spells. They, of course, are very uh, unreliable. The Proxy Wars are rampaging, and you can see that because of the fact that they're rampaging, because they got whittled down so badly by Dark Shards, they're now not able to push straight through and go after my range contingent. In the meantime, my spears will be able to push off this Blastelodon. My lord is taken back into the air, and these Crocs scores are getting beaten up on by the Death Hag. Now I'm able free to focus fire on Master Mundi, who has already lost a decent chunk of HP and will continue losing even more. Dark shards have absolutely ridiculous amount of uh, amounts of DPS, and now with uh, the uh, Murderous Prowess kicking in, these guys will be absolutely monstrous. Similarly, Witch Elves uh, with their Murderous Mastery will actually become even more powerful, and even the Temple Guards are going down pretty quickly. The mix of Cold One Dread Knights, Temple Guard, our Dread Spears, and Witch, Witch Elves, as well as the Death Hag. As the money just attempt to shield himself here with Shield of the Old Ones, which I think is a bit of an interesting choice given that I'm not doing very much magic damage, but it does boost the leadership potentially, fortunately, and I do believe this was a ruination of cities over here. As the money is simply getting annihilated, and uh, he's going to go down uh, like a 9-bin. On the left flank, things are going a lot more poorly for me. The Witch Elves are winning against the Star Spears and Shields, along with the help of the Cold One Dread Knights, who are now out of control, and that is definitely a bit of a problem for me. It means I can't micro. Uh, fortunately, these Cold One Dread Knights are still capable of being microed, <coughs> though they will pro probably shortly begin rampaging. So I push them into the back, going after these Skinks, just trying to shut them down and uh, kind of destroy them for good. 
Uh, the Skinks will not do perform pretty well against the uh, Red Knights because they have chosen so much armor. Many times Temple Guard are routing and my opponent's army does at this point shatter. So it was a very shock, sort of heavy, uh, quick, quick game um, with the uh, Dark Elves. So going over the stats, oh, you can see the uh, losses were pretty even. Um, my opponent did lose a little bit more than I did, but uh, it did come down to uh, some critical losses. My opponent's uh, lost Mass Mundi, the Bastilodon, and the Croc scores meant that he lost a massive amount of high value targets very, very quickly. Um, that is definitely something you want to watch out for. Dark Shards are an incredibly powerful ranged unit. They have very short range, which is, um, at least by crossbow or archer standards, uh, not by the standards of Skinks or Skaven, actually. And, um, they can dish out an immense amount of armor-piercing hurt, uh, far more than, uh, handguns or thunders, and even, and those are already units that really must be respected, and Dark Shards can do even more than that. Um, currently I do believe the only unit with more armor-piercing DPS than them is the Shades, and I think that's actually it. Uh, I think Shades have better DPS, and that, that is probably the only unit that does. Even Way Watchers, because they're a smaller unit than Dark Shards, uh, while they might have comparable DPS, I think that they, even the uh, Way Watchers have lower DPS than Dark Shards. And they can just get their ammo, <coughs> they can fire off their ammo very, very quickly, annihilate high priority targets, and uh, yeah, get away on fairly unscathed. Uh, my Dreadlord did get some very good breath attacks off, and uh, that was definitely very helpful. See, uh, he did some good damage there. The witch elves actually performed very well against uh, even Sarah Spear, Sarah Spearman. Uh, they're a very powerful unit in their own right. They're very squishy, so you have to be very careful about who you enga engage with them and not getting taken on by enemy ranged fire because they will die very quickly to that. But uh, once they're in melee, they are a very powerful unit, and uh, they do cause your enemies to rampage and make, which can really hinder your opponent's ability to micro. And that is possibly one of the biggest reasons I like to bring witch elves um, with dark elves. And I, I think. If you're fighting a faction that brings a lot of skirmishers, if you can get witch elves on top of skirmishers, or if it's a faction that likes to dive your backline, witch elves are great. Rampage will force the enemy to target them, essentially. Essentially, think of it as a uh, taunt from... In a lot of games, you have a sort of taunt skill where uh, you can bait, force an enemy to attack you for a certain amount of time. That is basically what the witch elves are d capable of doing here with Rampage. And uh, you can defend your backline with this by attacking enemy cavalry that tries to interfere with you and preventing them from chasing your vulnerable skirmishers. You can actually use it to counter uh, enemy skirmishers because you force them to fight you rather than just fleeing and, say, splitting up and uh, uh, shooting you down. And um, so that's a potentially very, very powerful skill. So definitely something to watch out for and keep in mind uh, when dealing with witch elves. Uh, dread spears, they're okay. They're cheap. <laughs> that's all it comes down to. And uh, the Cold One Dread Knights performed fairly well, though given the cost, I might have been better off just bringing normal Cold One Knights and uh, getting an extra unit of Dark Shards, for example. Uh, Death Hacks performed pretty well. For my opponent, you can see um, not he didn't get too much out of his units, um, simply because of how quickly the match ended, I think. Uh, Sars, the Sars, uh, but it's definitely, I think, a bit of a meta now. Is kind of evolving, as we've been watching over the past few days. Temple Guards and Skinks seem to be the go-to unit that you will see in practically every game, because people are trying to mitigate that rampage potential. Um, understandably so, because it can be absolutely crippling. Um, I myself have not been really been doing this so much, and it might be a mistake from my part. I've been mostly relying on Sars war Warriors and hoping that they kind of stay above that 50% threshold for as long as possible. Um, but as you saw in that game, uh, possibly the fact that some of his uh, high priority targets, like the Croc scores, started rampaging, possibly crippled his entire plan there because my opponent could not push them through to go after my squishy backline. Uh, and had he been able to do that, it might have gone very differently. Uh, so yeah, definitely. Uh, I think there's a bit of a meta slowly but surely evolving. We're getting some sort of more of a hang, uh, getting more of a hang of this game, and I think more and more people on that ladder are getting more of a hang for the game. For the game. Uh, I do hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, be sure to leave a like and subscribe down below. If you have any comments, criticism, any questions, uh, be sure to ask those down in the comments and I will respond as soon as I can. Um, as usual, guys, uh, I appreciate you all for watching and I will see you on the next one. Bye for now.